Hi, I'd like to introduce you to our special guest tonight. Dr. Joseph Zambraski is a professor, a professor of neurological surgery and is the director of clinical neurosurgery research at the Barrows Neurological in Phoenix, Arizona. He has spent 30 plus years at the Barrow involved in the care of neurosurgery patients, including those with complex vascular lesions and brain tumors. He recently joined GT Technologies as a consultant after being involved in their seminal clinical trials. Tonight's topic is gamma tiles for brain tumors. Thank you for taking time out on a busy Sunday for uh, our webinar, and you could take it away. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, as I uh, mentioned, we're going to be talking about gamma tile therapy for recurrent brain tumors today. Uh, I'm Joseph Zabramski. I'm a professor of neurological surgery at Barrow Neurological Institute in Phoenix, in Arizona. And before we get started, I thought it would be important just to mention my disclosures. I'm a minority stockholder in gamma tile therapy, and I recently became a consultant for gamma tile medical technologies, maker of gamma tiles. So we all sort of, we're gonna start with just an outline of what it's like to have a brain tumor. So we all know what it, the typical story is, one day you're fine and suddenly you're diagnosed with a brain tumor. And then after seeing a neurosurgeon, you usually undergo surgery to remove the tumor. You have a brief inpatient stay, and then it takes about two or three weeks before you can start radiation treatments uh, for your tumor. And this is to allow time for the tissues to heal uh, and prevent infection. And then you start external beam radiation, and that may last from one to six weeks. Um, even if you have a cyber knife or gamma knife, it's going to be uh, oftentimes days uh, at least. So what happens, you know, then you're followed by your neurosurgeon and your oncologist, and what happens if the tumor recurs? And we all know that tumor recurrence is pretty common with uh, malignant tumors like uh, gliomas, glioblastomas, uh, aggressive astrocytomas. So you might be a good candidate for surgery, but you may not be a candidate for additional radiation therapy. And radiation therapy is one of the most effective treatments we have. And oftentimes what then happens, if you're not a then you may not be a candidate for any treat, additional treatment at all. And uh, this was really frustrating to us. You know, we take care of, a, Barrows is a very large institute. We take care of a very large number of brain tumor patients. What we wanted to know was, was there a safer way to give radiation to recurrent tumors? And so about 10 years ago, um, we started working on a, a, an option, a different type of option. And the result was an implantable radiation source placed at the time of surgery that took advantage of new materials, including a new source of radiation that had not been previously available. So let's give it a little background. Treatment with, uh, from within the tumor cavity, also called brachiotherapy, is not a new idea. It has been used effectively to treat tumors outside the brain, particularly prostate. Uh, but previous attempts at using it in the brain have been very unsuccessful. Unlike tumors in other tissues, where a wide margin of normal tissue can be sacrificed to assure complete elimination of the tumor, uh, treatment of brain tumors requires limited collateral damage and precise control because the brain is so eloquent. So a little bit more background. Prior to gamma uh, tau therapy, the brachytherapy in the brain was delivered primarily by implanting, uh, directly implanting these small radiation seeds uh, of a radioactive isotope called iodine-125. And these were planted directly into the normal surrounding brain tumor resection cavity. And you can see the various little tiny seeds here actually pushed into the brain tissue. And there are three problems with this technique. One, the seeds are very small. They're 4.5 millimeters in length and about 0.8 millimeters in size. And we're actually designed for treatment of prostate tumors, as you can see here, and other solid organ tumors where the seeds could be placed by passing them through a 17 gauge needle. And you see that needle here within a uh, prostate tumor. The second problem was that there's a very high contact dose. The dose uh, that the brain receives right where it's in contact with the seed is about 200,000 rads. That's about uh, 20 times uh, the uh, necessary dose to cause radiation uh, injury. And the, in these types of doses are associated with uh, tissue depth, swelling, and were very poorly tolerated in the past. 
The third point um, is uh, so, but so let's just go back to that for a second. So this point of contact, if you think about your uh, uh, the radiation seeds as a source of radiation or heat, kind of like your electric stove top burner, you wouldn't want to touch the burner. But if you hold your hands at a distance above the burner, you can safely warm them. Likewise, you wouldn't throw your food directly on the burner. You would use a pan or something to separate the burner from your food so that you could control the heat much uh, more uh, appropriately. The third problem is that it takes about 30 days or 10 months for the I-125 seeds to deliver the majority of their radiation dose or approximately 95%. This is much too long for highly malignant and rapidly growing tumors such as glioblastoma in which the uh, time for recurrence is typically about six months. So gamma tiles were designed to eliminate these problems. And as I mentioned about 10 years ago, we started uh, sitting down trying to figure out how to do this. And this is what we came up with, um, were a product called gamma tiles. And you can see a, a drawing of them here. Um, the precise, the seeds are embedded in these tiles. And this allows us to have a precise geometry for the radiation sources, uh, which uh, will protect healthy brain tissue by avoiding contact. They're held at a, a, a perfect distance from the brain, and the tiles can be quickly and accurately placed during surgery. And uh, we'll just take a look here again. So these are the differences between uh, traditional seed brachytherapy and gamma tile brachytherapy. And you can see, again, the brachy traditional therapy was tricky to place. It had a very high point of contact dose in, uh, in excess of 200,000 rads and it used iodine-125 as a radiation source. So it had a very slowly release, taking about 10 months to deliver the majority of those. On the contrast, gamma tile therapy, which shown on the right, is very easy to place. It has a very predictable dosimetry, even spacing of the seeds, which assures that the tumor will receive the same dose at all points. There's no point of contact dose. The dose at the brain surface with gamma tiles is about 12,000 rads instead of 200,000 rads. And we switched to a cesium-135 radiation source. Now this only became available in 2003 and it started being used for prostate in about 2007. And you can, it rapidly delivers its dose of radiation, which is perfect for these aggressive type of tumors. Uh, so in about 48 days instead of 300 days or seven weeks instead of 10 months, you release about 95% of the dose. And this is ideal for these aggressive, rapidly growing tumors. So here's a picture of the actual tiles. They measure about uh, two centimeters on each side. They're square. And you can see that uh, there are seeds embedded in the tiles. The seeds are slightly offset uh, from one side more than the other. And there's a textured surface which allows us to know which side to place towards the brain. Here's a, a drawing, uh, engineering drawing, showing the uh, tiles in more details. And you can see that within each tile, there are four of these cesium seeds. Uh, and they're, as I mentioned previously, they're embedded in a vicral suture and then exactly placed within these tiles. And you notice that they're approximately one centimeter apart on center from all in each seed, one centimeter this way, one centimeter this way, and about five millimeters from the edge. And this is very important because if you place another tile right next to this one, then the next tile is going to have its seed one centimeter away, 5.5 millimeters here, five millimeters there, and another seed. And again, as I was mentioning, the seeds are placed asymmetrically in the tiles. This allows us to keep the tile far enough from the brain to avoid these really high doses that we talked about. So at the brain surface tumor interface, you're going to get about 12,000 rads, and at five millimeters, you're going to get six to 7,000 rads. And this is an ideal dose uh, for a brain tumor. So here's an example of a case being done. So this is a, a third resection of a recurrent high-grade astrocytoma. And this was done on the trial, so we're measuring the cavity here. You see it's about two centimeters. It's about two centimeters deep. And here we're putting the tiles in, and you can see the tiles are when they're wetted, they become very pliable and they can be easily placed around the tumor cavity. 
and they can be cut between the tiles so that you can, if you need just to place two seeds, you can very easily. So this video um, is shortened, it lasts about 30 seconds. In actuality, it took about three minutes to place these tiles in this tumor cavity. And the only thing that the patient needs to have done after you, the closure for the surgery, after you place the tiles, the closure is done in the routine fashion. There are no special precautions that are necessary. And the only thing extra that the patient has to have done is they have to have a post-operative CT scan uh, to demonstrate um, where the seeds are located. The seeds don't really show up on an MRI scan, but they show up very well on a CT scan. And then uh, through the magic of software, and we do this all the time, we fuse the CT scan with the MRI scan so that we can see exactly where the seeds are located. Then there's special software uh, that's widely available that allows the localized seeds, you, you just simply click on a seed and it develops a treatment plan that shows you exactly how much radiation is being given to the tumor cavity and to the surrounding brain. And you can see here that the green arrow indicates lower levels of radiation, the blue areas are very low levels of radiation, and the red area demonstrates the higher levels of radiation, the six to 8,000 rads we were talking about. Over here is the typical type of uh, treatment plan that a patient, patient would get after uh, using uh, external beam radiation. This would be with a very complex IMRT plan. And you can see that in addition to treating a tumor cavity, there's a lot of spread of additional radiation to other areas of the brain surrounding the tumor cavity, much more than you get in this with the gamma tile. And the problem again with this is that this additional radiation, this brain has already been radiated twice before, so we can't really give another dose of radiation without getting serious complications throughout this area uh, from an external beam source, where with this source, we can give a very high dose just to the tumor cavity and to a five to one centimeter edge around it. Much smaller volume, seems to be very well tolerated. So here's another case I'm going to demonstrate. This is a recurrent, let me just stop that for a second. This is a patient with a recurrent uh, gray tumor meningioma. I know we often think of meningiomas as low gray tumors, but there are a certain uh, subgroup of meningiomas that can act very aggressively. So this gentleman had undergone previous resection of his tumor and approximately one year later, it was back again. And he got radiation therapy immediately after the resection of his tumor because it was a grade two, it shows uh, features consistent with a more malignant nature. So here we are, we're resecting the tumor. And you can see this area here where the tumor is actually adhering to the brain and growing into the brain. Much of the cavity, the tumor is not growing into the brain. Then we can place the radiation seeds in the gamma tiles around the tumor cavity here. The edges of the dura are where these tumors like to grow back. So we can essentially enlarge the craniotomy by almost four centimeters by placing these seeds around the cavity. And then we can place a couple of seeds right over the area where the tumor was invading the brain. And you see that going on right here. So this is this patient's preoperative scan. You can see that he had uh, you can see the previous craniotomy right here. You can see the defect in the bone. You can see the recurrent tumor. And here's his MRI scan after the surgery. All you see from the radiation seeds are these just these little dark spots. Uh, they're not very well visualized. These are very small. And they don't interfere with your doctor's ability to follow your tumor normally. Because they're so small and because they have no significant artifact, you can follow the tumor normally with MRI scans. And here's the radiation dose when you combine the MRI scan and CT scans together, you can see, in this case, we've used, uh, the doses are listed right here. You can see that the dose at about one centimeter is 6,000 rads, and that is perfect. And it would be almost impossible to get the same type of flat dose symmetry if you were using external beam radiation. The radiation would be coming in from multiple portals, but you would get a much larger spread of area. In addition, I want you to notice here, the little blue arrow points to the fact this patient had uh, surgery uh, 18 months earlier for a tumor in this location. And uh, you can see the seeds are still perfectly in place. They don't float around. Uh, they don't get lost. 
and they stay right where we put them. And you can see here on his follow-up MRI scan that there's no tumor regrowth at that site 18 months later. So the, the, these results, particularly in the meningiomas, really made us start to think, you know, we should be using this in more, in other types of tumors as well. So here's an example. Here's our first patient that we implanted in January 2019. This was a special that a uh, local news station did. Let me just play that for you. Just 11 months. This is my third. And three surgeries ago, Linda Tenega was busy raising her son when she was blindsided by glioblastoma. Oh, sometimes that off. With that in my head. That is the same type of cancerous tumor that killed Senator John McCain. It soon forced Linda into emergency surgery, followed by six weeks of radiation. Ugh. It was not a good time. <laughs> it was not fun. Which is why when the cancer came back, she tried something called gamma tile therapy, even if it sounded like science fiction. Each tile has um, four radioactive seeds on it. <laughs> That's what I was told. <laughs> it's true. University of Minnesota Health made Linda the first patient in the country to have the FDA-approved radioactive tiles implanted during surgery. By implanting the radiation directly at the time of surgery, you are treating the tumor immediately. Dr. Clark Chen showed us Linda's tiles, which will last about a month while targeting the area most likely to see a tumor regrow. She's getting much more intense radiation in the area that she needs it the most. So it's safer for the rest of the brain. Radiation oncologist Catherine Dusenberry says the tiles also disintegrate on their own. There's just one surgery. The patient goes home, they get the radiation, and they don't need to come back in necessarily to have it removed. Health-wise and stuff, it's not even like they're in there. And that means Linda can now focus on what matters. I just keep going. You just got to put a smile on your face and just be, in, be a strong person and show my son that he has a strong mom that can be able to, we can get through anything. Now, Dr. Chen says gamma tiles are just one of many tools they now have to fight glioblastoma. Linda is also using chemotherapy, but her implants started helping her fight back with radiation right after surgery two weeks ago. Normally, that wouldn't be possible at all for four more weeks. Wow. Well, back to you. That's we amazing. wish her the best. She is sure delightful. We wish her the yeah. best. Thanks, Ken. So the, that, I think that case kind of really summarizes um, the, the experience of the patients with gamma tiles. Um, you know, it, it sounds like we just started this, and we have. Uh, our first implant was in January of 2019. Uh, we're doing multiple implants per week now. Uh, but, you know, we, it, we received FDA approval for this in uh, July of 2018, and we spent the rest of the year of 2018 actually uh, ensuring that we could properly manufacture these and deliver them around the country without any problems. And so it wasn't until January that we started actually commercially releasing them. So in addition to those cases, uh, as part of the evaluation for these patients, we did a uh, study that, was, that we submitted to the FDA to get approval. And the results of this study were presented at the April 2019 meeting of the Annual American Association of Neurologic Surgeons, also known as a double ANS, or the Harvey Cushing Society. This is a very prestigious society, and I think we were very pleased to be able to present our data there. And you can see what we did is we consented 120 patients, 118 patients underwent surgery, one patient declined, and one patient improved on steroids, and so they probably didn't have a recurrent tumor. And then uh, 108 patients underwent resection. Now, of those 108, 79 had previously irradiated tumors, and this is the group that we presented at the AANS. This group occurred much later, and the data is still maturing on this group. We don't have all the data available yet. We hope to have it later this year. So in those 79 patients, uh, they typically had failed two previous surgeries and had undergone at least one prior radiation treatment. Uh, this was a prospective multi-basket trial. Um, so it was independent of what a basket trial means. It was independent of any type of specific pathology. Uh, we started by enrolling patients with meningiomas and METs, and then uh, later began enrolling patients with the uh, high-grade gliomas. The, the trial intervention was max, maximal safe resection of the tumor type, and uh, then followed by the placement of the gamma tiles. And 
you know, maximum safe resection is always the goal of every surgery. Uh, the advantage of the gamma tiles is that right after the maximum safe resection, when there's the least amount of tumor cells left, you can place the radiation seeds and start treatment immediately. And the endpoints for this were local control, overall survival, and toxicity. You can see the median follow-up was 16.4 months uh, for this group. Uh, the median local tumor control after surgery plus gamma tile uh, for all the tumors was almost 20 months versus only 10 months for the treatments that the patients had received prior to their treatment with gamma tiles. And you can see that that was very significantly different. The, uh, we, right here, we break it down a little bit more. We have the median local tumor control for high-grade gliomas was 12 months versus 9.5 months for prior treatments. And you know, we all understand that each time a tumor recurs, it's more likely to recur quicker the next time. So you know, we were very impressed that we were able to extend this window out for the high-grade glioma patients. Uh, for meningioma patients, it was even more impressive. Uh, the, it, the average time to recurrence prior to the uh, use of gamma tiles was 23 months. And for after gamma tile th therapy was almost 50 months. Again, a very significant difference. The median overall survival was 12 months for the high-grade glioma patients and 12 months for the metastases patients and almost 50 months again for the meningioma patients. So this is a picture of local control and uh, this is for the meningiomas. Now these patients were all our patients. So we had been treating them. So all these patients were done at one center and that was because we were actually manufacturing the uh, gamma tiles on site. And uh, so they could only really be done at one center. And here is uh, our data on the recurrent high-grade meningiomas. And you can see this is how quickly they recurred before the use of gamma tiles. And this is how quickly they recurred after starting to use gamma tiles. So a very significant uh, improvement. This is brain metastases. And you can see that there was a significant improvement. Of course, patients from, with brain metastases die from uh, you know, usually systemic complications. We're able to control the tumors in the brain. We just can't control the systemic uh, metastases. And so the patients tend to die from that. So that limited uh, local control. Uh, and then this is for the regurgent high-grade gliomas. And again, you can see that we prolonged the survival. The median survival was about 12 months for uh, tumor complete with complete tumor control, local control of the tumor. So how does that compare to other treatment options? So in this slide, we're looking at the overall survival for recurrent high-grade gliomas. And we compared gamma tiles, which is this uh, grass green tile, to Optune, shown here in blue. Uh, this is the uh, trial uh, that got Optune uh, approved by the FDA, uh, the 2012 tile, trial. And this is the uh, chemotherapy arm only of the Optune trial. And then this is a, uh, a recent uh, NRG study that showed what the results would be if you gave only uh, comfort care or supportive care. And you can see that at, at all points, the gamma tiles seem to be providing a benefit uh, to overall survival for these patients with high-grade gliomas. And we're not saying we're better than Optune. We're just saying we're in the same boat with Optune. We need, would need to do a head-to-head -head trial of gamma tiles versus Optune. But, you know, in fact, that's not necessary because you can have gamma tiles, and a few weeks later, you could start using the Optune again. So there's no reason. The good thing about these gamma tiles, this is radiation therapy. It doesn't prevent you from being involved in other types of studies or receiving other types of treatment. So none of these results would be very good if we didn't have, uh, if we had a high complication rate. So this is a, a study published by Wong et al. Um, in uh, neurosurgery focus in 2012. And they, what they did is they did a, uh, what we call a uh, extended analysis of all the literature available about complications. This is called a meta-analysis. And what they did is they looked at what was the incidence of wound infection. And their definition for wound infection was that you needed to be put on antibiotics after surgery because of evidence of, uh, uh, of some evidence of infection along the incision line. And in this literature, 
the rate is from zero to 4%. For our gamma tau patients, it was 2.5%. So you can see we're right in the middle of that window. And revision for wound closure means that the wound was actually breaking down and required a return to the operating room. And for normal neoplasm surgeries, that ranges from one to 24%. And you can see we were 2.5%. This is just two patients. Uh, one of the other complications that are relatively common with seizure surgery, and I guess maybe we were just lucky, the range is from one to 12%, but we had no patients with early post-operative seizures. What about the effects of radiation? So in the past, uh, brachytherapy has been associated with a high risk of complications uh, because of uh, radiation injury caused by the C's. And as I showed you, the C's used to be actually implanted into the brain tissue. And, but any type of radiation after you've had uh, surgery before in radiation therapy would be high risk. So here's repeat external beam radiation therapy. And this includes gamma knife, cyber knife, and any of the IMRT plans that are available, any of the new treatment plans. And you can see that the effect of radiation injury caused by repeat radiation. Now, this is somebody who's had radiation before already. You go back to surgery and you want to try to touch up, give them a little bit more dose to complication range from radiation injury is 5 to 24%. And these are serious complications. These are patients that require steroids or medications or even a return to the operating room. These are not minor changes. Uh, traditional brachytherapy, even worse, as we pointed out earlier, almost 20% to 50%. And for gamma tau therapy, it was only 8%. This is two patients out of the 102 uh, patients that were in the study. In fact, the dose of radiation is, uh, is so well controlled that we didn't even have any patients, we only had one patient, excuse me, that lost hair as a result of placing these seeds from their radiation therapy. So in summary, uh, this form of therapy, gamma tiles, easily integrates to the surgical workflow. It adds no more than five to six minutes to the surgical procedure. There's minimum radiation exposure to the surgeon and the OR hospital staff. It enables the initiation of treatment immediately following maximal safe tumor resection. And this is key because that's when the tumor volume that remains is at a minimum. There's no additional hospital stay and it simplifies post-operative care. Patients do not need to return for outpatient radiation therapy. There's no special inpatient or outpatient precautions. In fact, there are no restrictions on commercial travel. Potentially you could, excuse me, potentially you could take the bus home or you could fly on a commercial airline home. Uh, there's no conflict with other systemic therapies. So you could still have chemotherapy, immunotherapy, Optune, et cetera. All of those remain options. This is considered just standard radiation. It's just given a different way and appears to be much safer. So we envision better outcomes for our patients. Again, I just wanted to mention that this is already FDA approved for treatment of recurrent brain tumors in July 9th, 2018. I might mention that we have a very favorable uh, code from CMS that makes this uh, uh, a very reasonable uh, uh, alternative for the hospitals. They're not going to lose money by doing this. Uh, it appears to extend the local recurrence-free survival with minimal complications, and it demonstrates proven efficacy and safety. It reduces patient burden, helps preserve quality of life, and exceeds patient, clinician, and hospital expectations with regards to clinical expediency. And um, I have some more case studies unless people have questions. If uh, I can show a few more cases if people would like to see them. Yes, or do, do a few more cases. Time, we'll just break for some questions. Do a couple of cases first and then we'll do questions. Okay, so here's another case. This is a, page, a patient with a 74-year-old man with a stage four chondrosarcoma. Uh, he has a previous surgery for radiation surgery, uh, stereotactic radio surgery times two. He's had three resections for this tumor in the back here. You can see the dates, um, April of 2013. And here back again, after just resecting the tumor in July of 2013, we can see the tumors come back again. So here he is, there's the tumor back again. He's had previous stereotactic radiation. He's not a candidate for more radiation. So you know, before we had gamma tiles, we wouldn't have even considered probably offering this patient another treatment. We went back in, we did the gamma resection and the gamma tiles. And here he is um, 
14 months later with a little tiny bit of radiation effect, but no recurrence at this site. Here's another patient. This is another patient of mine. This is a grade two meningioma. Um, he has uh, received previous radiation and surgery. You can see here, here's his uh, pre-op surgery from 5, 2011. And there you see multiple tumors. We resected the tumors and he received radiation uh, therapy. You see the IMRT uh, plan that gave him about 6,000 rads to this entire area. And then you can see there's a little bit of recurrence of the tumor here. We gave him a little bit of a stereotactic radiation boost here. And we thought, okay, this is great. He's going to do fine. And of course, as soon as you start feeling that way, back pops the tumor in 2014. And he's already had his maximal dose of radiation to this area. So without gamma tiles, we could have gone in and resected this, but it would be very likely it would come back again. So we went in, we did surgery. We put in 14 seeds over this area. And here he is, followed 42 months later with no recurrence at this site and good control of his intracranial tumors. And then last, I would just like to show this young woman. This is a, a very unfortunate 24-year-old woman who had a grade three, also known as an anaplastic astrocytoma of the thalamus. And she had undergone multiple previous surgeries and radiation therapy. She received external beam radiation, 60 gray here, that's uh, 6,000 rads, and uh, tel temozolomide, which are standard treatments. Uh, she had surgery for progression on, uh, in uh, 2015, and then the tumor came back again in 2016. And really at this point, uh, she was being considered for a referral to the hospice. But uh, she was referred to our center and she decided to try the gamma tiles one more option for treatment. And you can see here, here's her post-operative scan. Uh, we were able to uh, place a significant number of these seeds within the tumor cavity. This is a very deep cavity, very difficult to get to. And here's the post-operative treatment plan. You can see how it's very tight and conformal right around the tumor. She gets a very high dose. And she actually survived. Here's her scan uh, 10 months later. She had good tumor control. About two months after the scan, her tumor recurred and she subsequently passed away. But we gave her 10 months of really good treatment when she had no, of good quality of life, when she had no options here. She didn't have to get any further chemotherapy or radiation therapy after this surgery. That's very impressive. Thank you. Um, I especially like where you compared each individual patient to their prior recurrence. I've never seen that before. And usually on this second recurrence, it would be much worse than that first recurrence. And you right, had so here's, excellent results. So here's one more example. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a patient with a high-grade glioma, uh, glioblastoma uh, that I resected out. And then he comes back. And here's his second post-operative recurrence. We can see tumor right here going back in again. It's growing here. Here's his post-op with gamma tau treatment after the surgery. So this is what we resected. You can see the cavity. You can just see the little tiny dots from the, radi from the radiation seeds, the gamma tau seeds. Here's a different view. This is called a coronal view. So this is this uh, axial view and then the coronal view. And then you can see here, 12 months later, he still has no recurrence in that tumor bed. So he had a, a very prolonged survival, uh, considering that he already, this was his second recurrence. So that's it. Sorry. Okay, no, sorry, I stepped on you. Uh, it's very impressive. Um, we just have a few questions. Um, first, is my understanding right that the tiles biodegrade, but the seeds stay there forever? Yeah, so the tiles are made out of uh, a collagen matrix that it's called Duragen. Uh, we specifically chose this product because it uh, has a very, uh, it has a worldwide experience, over a million implants in the brain, and it's very, very safe. It doesn't swell, it doesn't shrink, and uh, it's very, very stable. It lasts about eight weeks, eight to 12 weeks, but during that period of time, there's uh, tissue ingrowth to that material. And so it holds the seeds in place even after the collagen is gone, but it's replaced instead with the patient's own tissues. We use the same material to cover the dura uh, when we have to resect a portion of the dura. And it's the 
uh, uh, the cells grow into this layer and you end up with an artificial dural layer made up by the, own, by the body's own cells. Uh, somebody asked if you could also implant gliadel at the same time or possibly add a drug like Timidar, for example, to your, uh, to the matrix that dissolves, so you slowly release Timidar at the same time that it's being biodegraded. No, uh, you, we have not attempted to use gliadil. Gliadil, uh, at the same time, gliadil wafers are associated with their own uh, list, you know, their own problems. Uh, there's an increased risk of post-operative seizures. There's a more difficulty with wound healing. Uh, most of these patients had already received maximum uh, chemotherapy, uh, including Timidar. So uh, they could resume Timidar very shortly after the surgery, but we didn't uh, try putting the two things together. And you have to realize that if you try adding something in, you have to start all over again to get FDA approval. So we have FDA approval for this. And you know, it's something to look at in the future about adding uh, additional chemotherapy agents but right now we just can't do that because we would have to go back to the drawing board. We're a very small, little tiny company. It's just getting started. It's something interesting to think about for the future. Absolutely, great question. Okay, um, is this available anywhere else other than Barrow? It's available throughout the United States. Has anybody else used yes, it Yes, we have uh, cases at, uh, as you saw in uh, Minnesota, uh, in, uh, we're doing uh, uh, cases, I'm doing a case next week with a neurosurgeon in Colorado. We have cases scheduled for Detroit, Florida. So it's starting to, you know, we just, as I mentioned, we just started our commercial release in uh, January, but it's really starting to take off. There's increasing interest uh, around the country. We probably have about 45 centers right now that are in the process of getting approval from their hospital. Uh, as you might imagine, Anytime you bring a new therapy into the hospital, you have to prove to the hospital that it's going to be efficacious, that it's not going to cost them more money than they can charge for it. You know, they have to be able to at least break even. And uh, you also have to show that, uh, that it's safe. Okay. Another question was, when you were talking about how uh, the shape of the radiation field is better than uh, the standard methods. Is it true that proton beam can be shaped that well as well, or you do it better than proton can be? Uh, the proton beam would not be as well shaped as this, and the protons continue to travel through the tissues. So there's a much a broader area that's affected by the proton beam. Yes, you can kind of, it's kind of proton beam is very similar to like uh, gamma knife or cyber knife. You get a very high local dose at one spot, but you also get that spread that we saw in that uh, one picture that I showed for the IMRT protocol. Okay, would uh, gamma tiles exclude you from most other trials? No, it's, uh, I, we haven't had that much experience with it, but I've, in talking to the neuro-oncologists that I have discussed this with, <clears throat> and at least with our neuro-oncologists at the barrel, uh, this is considered standard of care radiation therapy. So this is just like giving the patient a treatment with uh, a repeat treatment with gamma knife or cyber knife after your surgery. Instead, it's the, the patient gets the treatment immediately. So they're actually probably eligible for these other trials even earlier than they would be if they had to wait to undergo uh, gamma knife or cyber knife treatment. We had trouble when uh, Gleadel came out because they were worried that just the physical wafer itself might cause changes on MRIs. Um, all right. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a good point, but uh, the, the gliadil wafers, unfortunately, the gliadil wafers actually are considered a contraindication for involvement in most studies that are looking at new drugs because gliadil is a chemotherapy agent. So you don't want to try to mix chemotherapy agents together. So most trials exclude gliadil, but they would not exclude uh, the gamma tiles because it's just a standard, another standard form of radiation that's actually been available for about 30 years, it's just no one had figured out how to use it this safely before. Can you use it for newly diagnosed glioblastoma? Not yet. We are in the process. We've actually submitted um, our 501k to the FDA to allow us to remove the word recurrent from the indications. Right now, 
It's cleared by the FDA for recurrent brain tumors. And we have submitted uh, to the FDA to remove the word recurrent. And we think that there's a good chance that they'll agree. Uh, we have a quite a large group of patients that we're collecting the data on and we've submitted to the FDA for this secondary approval. But I'm hopeful, maybe in August or September of this year. Very good. Well, that's about all the questions about gamma tiles. Uh, would you care to tell us about any other exciting stuff going on at Barrows? Well, you know, of course, at the Barrows, we're using the new um, treatments that uh, allow you to label brain tumors. So for the example, there's a 5-ALA that it, uh, actually labels glioma tumor cells, high-grade glioma tumor cells. So it can identify the uh, high-grade, like the anaplastic astrocytomas <clears throat> and the glioblastoma tumor cells and allow you to get a much more complete resection. So you, you give this dye and then you just use the, the microscope, you change the filter on the microscope to use a different type of light and you can see if you've left tumor behind. It's pretty fascinating. <clears throat> In addition, you can, for other types of tumors, you can use um, other um, intravenous dyes to label the tumor. Um, for example, you can use fluorescein dye to label other different types of malignant tumors. And it's a little bit more difficult to use the fluorescein dye, but again, we're using that. We also, of course, take advantage of uh, Optune and uh, the other uh, chemo, uh, any chemotherapy trials that are going on. Good. Um, just two more quick questions. They just came in. Um, would the gamma tiles mess up the blood vessels in the area and prevent you from having uh, being able to do some of the new intraarterial uh, treatments like the intraarterial carboplane or intraarterial uh, Avastin? Uh, I don't believe so because the radiation is very, very localized. Uh, those treatments are defined to get a little bit, what you're trying to do is with the, the gamma tiles is to reduce the tumor burden to an absolute minimum. So right after the surgery, when the tumor burden is already small, we all know that the most likely place for residual tumor cells to hide and start growing again is right along the margins. And you know, in surgery, we're limited by how much of the tumor we can resect because we're in eloquent tissues often. And we can't just resect a nice margin around the tumor. So we're forced to stop as soon as we feel like we've gotten the majority of our gross total resection. By using a gamma tiles, you can extend that another centimeter uh, very safely. So then you would still be eligible for all these other treatment options. Okay, is that true with glioblastoma that there's malignant cells further than the one centimeter area? So yeah. would it actually make sense that uh, a wider radiation field might be better? So the patients, I remember uh, right now we're using it primarily for recurrent tumors or only for recurrent tumors. And so the patient has already received a wide area of radiation. And we don't see recurrences outside of the, you know, the primary focus where the tumor initially was until quite a bit later. And then those are handled separately. Okay. Um, do, you believe in using a do you believe in using a cocktail approach where uh, like off-label use of uh, drugs or repurposed drugs or uh, trying to mix different treatments for a patient, or do you go with like the standard protocols or clinical trial? Uh, uh, we usually go with the standard treatment protocols, you know, and uh, I'm a simple neurosurgeon, so I don't fool around with those drugs. Okay, <laughs> that's fair. But I don't know all the side effects of all those various drugs, particularly if you use them in combination. So I always leave those decisions to my radiation, my neuro-oncologists. Perfect. Um, that's about all I had. Thank you so much. It was a very good uh, presentation. I really didn't know much about gamma tile, which is surprising, of course, it's FDA approved. And now I'll let people know it's an option. About it soon. Okay, thank you very much. That's it for tonight. Okay, good night. Good night, it was my pleasure.